Alright. Okay. The so juniors. Juniors, I know you're gone Tuesday. You guys have said you missed the first half of the review. We went one through twelve. If you wanna if you wanna go one through twelve, here's how you do it. Go to our website, mrward.org, you click on daily lessons at the top, they're up here, you go down to pre count. And once you're on, so mrward.org, you click on the daily lesson at the top, pre count, you scroll down. Uh, Tuesday the 26th, I have a dated. You click it, you can go down and see all the problems you did, and watch the video. That's so cute. So there you go. Yeah, there's my video. I was really happy. Alright, so right. I, I saw that photo, I was like, yeah. Yeah. Alright. It's clickbait. Okay, sure. It's, it's so clickbait. Alright. So, alright. But, anyways. That's how you do it, and in case you're gone, I think the first ones are self-explanatory. Just remember, um, I am checking for work. Show something. Because if, on uh, number one, if you give me a wrong answer, because you're that dork who did four plus five first, and I, and it's not, it's not, that's not what you do first, and you get the answer is like 72, and it's not 72, um, I count five off, because it took five lines of work if you actually write it out. And do not be that person that boils that whole mess out. Okay? Just plug in nine and solve it in four seconds. Okay? Okay, number two, uh, unions and intersections. Make sure you know that your answer has to be curly braces. I'm looking for numbers. You should know the difference between it when it's like upside down versus a U shape. Okay? All right, four, simple five, five, evaluate. There's like three lines of work there if you actually evaluate. I actually want the number there. Uh, six and seven, I actually distribute or multiply them together. Uh, eight, write these as numbers. Now the one morning I had for eight and nine that I told the class here that was here Tuesday. Um, the only difference between eight and nine, this is the only rare time I would ever do this on test. I could, on the test, I could change this problem eight and nine to give you the number, the digit, and ask you to put them in scientific notation. That would be the only difference. Like this way you're, you're in scientific, you're going back to the number. I can do the complete flip on the test. That would be the only time I'd ever change a problem like that. Okay. Um, 10, 11, you have to um, simplify those. Um, the trick is just multiply these together, then try to evaluate. Um, divide these first, and then you can simplify later. Um, but I want the simplest right out form. If you don't break them down all the way, I count them wrong. Like, you didn't go as far as you could. Okay. And then we, we ended with number 12, where we figure out how to subtract those. Let's continue on today. We're going to start with 13. And remember, we're going to try to add and subtract if we can. So we're going to walk through this. Now, the reason I'm picking 13 today, it's a cube root. That's a cube root. That's the way Microsoft Word puts it. Um, so I want to make sure that you know how to do it. Okay? All right. So how this works, I'm going to break these up in all the prime numbers so I can see can I take the cube root of them. Um, in fact, let me scroll up so I can have this near the top. Okay. All right. So... Um, so taking the cube root, let's break down 24, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, then x, y, y, and a y, and that's cube root. And again, this, um, how I did that was 8 times 3, so I broke 8 times 2 times 2. The x, alright, so then we have the subtraction symbol, the cube root, and I know there was a y on the outside, I'm going to leave that out there, I don't really care about that. The 81 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times x. All right, so I'm doing it by that method where you're trying to figure out how to break them down as far as you can. Um, so now, what we're looking for with a cube root is you're looking for triples. Well, Dylan Perkins and Taylor Barkema, please come to the office. Dylan Perkins and Taylor Barkema. Okay, um, so I'm looking for triples. We have triples of twos, triples of the letter Y. Um, back here we have a triple of threes. Um, when you have triples in a cube root, you cross two of them out, Pick one out. How that works, you're always crossing all of them out and one leaves. That's how it works. You cross them all out, one leaves the back of front seat. Same thing back here, cross them out, pick one out. So really the two and the Y are on the outside now, and the thing that's left inside is a three and an X. Okay, does that make sense in the front? Yeah. Okay, the back over here, same thing. We'll cross two of them out, pick one out. So there's a three and a Y on the outside, and left on the inside that I didn't circle was a 3 and an x. At this point, we have to check. Are they the exact same root, and do they have the same variables out front? And yes, they do. So now we can actually subtract these. And all you do is you just subtract the leading numbers. What's 2 minus 3? So negative 1, y, cube root, 3x. That's your final answer on this problem. You actually just subtract the front numbers. If the radicals are different, 
or those variables are different, they have different powers or whatever, you can't subtract, you can't add, you're just done. Okay? Okay, questions on 13? No. Okay. Alright, let's move on. Let's go to 14. Where, how often do you have to wash that towel? Uh, I wash it once a week. Did you get home and wash it? No, it's been longer here. So, alright, 14. Um, this particular problem requires that you know what a conjugate is. They have radicals on the bottom. Um, there's no way I can simplify it right away. I can't add or subtract these. So we're going to have to do a conjugate rule. The conjugate is we're going to have to multiply it by the, basically it looks like the opposite of the bottom. It's not really a true opposite. This is the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, and we're going to take that times the top and bottom. Um, the reason why, this actually makes the number 1 when I multiply it. So we're really not changing the problem, we're just changing the look of it. Um, so on the top, uh, we're going to distribute the 11 through, because this is actually in parentheses, same thing down here. So we're going to distribute the 11 through, so we have 11 root 7 plus 11 root 3. So all over, because I distribute the 11. Now on the bottom, we have to go first, outer, inner, last. Now the, the thing that you need to know, first is fine, that's root 7 times root 7, which is root 49, we'll simplify that here in a minute. The outer and inner will cancel. That's how the conjugates work. Because that'll be a positive root 21, negative root 21, they cancel. And then the last is negative root 3 times positive root 3 is negative root 9. Now most people will just write down what the numbers are right away. That's fine. I usually write it down like what the radicals are first, so I don't make a mistake. Um, but this is how it should start. Any questions with the start of the problem? How I foiled? How I distributed? Okay. So the very bottom, because I have to keep going here, 11 root 7 plus uh, 11 root 3. Um, the denominator now, I can actually simplify. That's 7 minus 3, because I can actually take the radical of both of those numbers. They're perfect squares. That's how it works. That's why we did the conjugate. Um, and the bottom actually turns out to be a 4. So we have, we have uh, 11 radical 7 plus 11 radical 3 all over 4. The last step, when you're here, you're done, technically, but if you can, if you can put the 4 under each of these to see if you can divide, because maybe there's like an 8 and a 16 here, you could technically put the 4 under both and divide them out, so you won't actually have a fraction. Um, I can't do that. The 11 is prime. I can't divide a 4 out of it without getting a decimal one on one. Okay, questions with that problem. It'll be something very similar to that. I'm not trying to make a tricky question. I just want to check, do you know what a conjugate is? Do you know how to use it correctly? Make sense? Okay, remember, the conjugate is just you flip the middle sign, not the whole thing. Some people like get wrong, they think it's a true opposite. It's just the middle sign changes. That's a true conjugate. That's how you explain the denominator. Okay, we're good on 14? Moving on. Again, if I'm going too fast, just slow down. Hopefully this makes sense. Probably some of you already have maybe some of this filled out already, so that's good. You can just double check. All right, 15. Okay, we have to do the indicated operation. Um, so we're adding and subtracting. We're not multiplying on this problem. So we're not foiling or uh, you know, distributing um, like by multiplying. Uh, we're adding and subtracting. The big thing is I need my answer in simplest form. They call it standard form. So that means descending order. And then you also have to state the degree. Most people forget that part, but they miss a point. It's just one simple thing. Okay, so how, how we start. You need to first, um, if we need to distribute like the negative sign back here. And, and if there's a plus, we don't really need to distribute anything. So it's really deceiving because I don't actually need the parentheses up here. There's nothing to distribute. I don't need to distribute anything, but I do need to distribute this negative sign back here. So negative x squared, positive 4x, positive 3. Okay, everyone understand the beginning of this problem? I'm not joking. I had somebody last year, they distributed the negative sign. Okay, they distributed the negative sign, and then they foiled this all out, and then they tried to add it to this one. It's not how you do the problem. You're adding and subtracting. You can get rid of parentheses once you distribute the signs through. Okay. Um, so, um, adding these together, I have a 5x squared, a 2x squared, and a negative x squared, so that's 6x squared, so if I you know, add up like terms correctly, 
so it's 7 minus 1. Um, negative 7, negative 3 is negative 10, plus 4 is negative 6. X. Um, 8, 7 makes negative 1, and then 3 is what, a positive 2? Did I forget anything in that problem? No. Doesn't look like it. Now, at this point, that's, that's the simplest form. You know, that's the reduced form. It's in standard. It's going in descending order. What's the highest degree? Yeah. Two. So it's degree two. So I have to write that behind. Degree two. You can abbreviate this line. Okay, so I'm looking for this and that. I would definitely recommend that you write down at least some work if there's any to be had. Um, like most of this is pretty straightforward. So I would definitely <coughs> probably write down the back, maybe just to know what that is. Um, most people can do it pretty quick. Just make sure that you are adding terms, you're not forgetting anything. Triple check it if you need to. Just make sure you added up all the x squares correctly, you added up all the x's. Some people, the most common mistake that people make on this one, if there's any mistake at all, they forget the power of 2, so then they add up more x's than they can. Like, they forget the power of 2 here, so now, you know, this, this one changed, and now you have too many x's added together. So it changes kind of two different answers on your problem when you forget a power like that, so just be careful with that. Okay, questions with 15. Moving on. 16. Now we're foiling, multiplying, whatever we want to do. Okay, um, this problem, I'm just going to probably pick parentheses. I could even have a parenthesis with power on it where you can multiply. I'm not going to pick something stupid like power of 7. Um, but it'll be something where you have to like distribute, you have to know how to do it. So on this one, you're going to take the 2x times everything in the back. I'm going to try to color code as we go. So 2x times everything in the back. And then once I'm done with that, then I take the negative 3 times everything. Yes, yeah, so I'll try to color code. I do expect to see all the work on paper for this one because it does take a little while. A lot of people cannot do that in their head. Um, so color coding here, 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times the negative 3x is negative 6x squared. And 2x times 5 is 10x. So there's the first part in color coding. That's the 2x times everything in the back. Now negative 3 times everything in the back is negative 3x squared. Um, positive 9x. And a negative 15 if I did that right. And now we can add like terms. Now we don't have to tell me degree or anything like that, but I can add like terms. I only have the 2x cubed. Um, let's see what else. x squares, I have negative 9x squares. Um, 19x's. And a negative 15. Okay, questions, comments about number 16. Okay, 16 should be mentally preparing you for how you do 17 and 18. Because they're finding area, they're finding volume. Um, it should be something pretty obvious, pretty easy. Okay, so let's go through these. Um, on test day, if the pictures can become really faded or really messed up, I'll always put the pictures up here on the board. And I might even leave them up there most of the class period. Just so if you need to look up, like, I can't see what this picture is telling you. <coughs> um, on this one, you're finding the answer in standard form that represents the area of the shaded. So, I know it's hard to see, but this is the shaded area. It's the deck without the pool. That's a funky deck. Yeah, long pool. So, um, but how we do this, um, you have to find the area of the entire picture, and then we'll subtract the pool out. Okay, so the area of the entire deck is length times width. That's just how you do it. So x plus 3, that's the width times the length, which is x plus 9. So that's the area of the entire deck. And then we need to subtract the pool. Well, the pool is x plus 1 times x plus 5. So these are the parts I'm going to have to do, and that really mimics number 16. That's why I was having you practice one of those. Um, I don't care if they're whole numbers, but the, the most common mistake people make on this one is forgetting to subtract. That you have to actually subtract the pieces to figure out the total area. Okay, so doing the math, I'm going to try to keep this color coded here. So this is x squared plus 12x plus 27. I did all the math right in my head. Um, um, keep going here in the back. I'm going to put this in parentheses right now. This is going to be x squared plus 6x plus 5. So I foil that out. And then what do I have to do with the negative sign? Distribute. Yeah, distribute. The negative sign goes to the back. We have to actually distribute. Um, so this is negative x squared uh, minus 6x minus 5. The big thing is getting this down where you're actually distributing the numbers down. Right? Okay. And the beginning, 
x squared plus 12x plus 27. Now you can add up like terms and get down to your fraction. So the x squares are gone. They actually cancel. The 12 minus 6 is 6x's, and 27 minus 5 is 22. Okay, questions, comments? Okay. Um, let's move on to the next one, volume. The volume problem. Let's make sure everyone gets the right answer. And stop me if I'm going too fast. I'm trying to blitz through this so we can get through all of them. We have some time. Okay, 18. Okay. Um, obviously, it's difficult to see this, but it is a cube. And there's the Jenga piece missing out of it. It's like a horseshoe. Okay? Um, we have to find volume of the entire picture and then subtract out the piece that's missing. Um, so the, the volume of the whole thing is depth, length, and width. So that's x plus 5, 2x plus 1, and the x plus 2. That's the volume of the whole thing. <coughs> length, width, depth going to the back. The Jenga piece that's missing is length, width, and the depth going to the back is, is x plus 5. So 3 times x times x plus 5. That's the Jenga piece that's missing. Okay, does that make sense? Like, you're finding the, the, the volume of both of those parts. And then what, what we'll do is we'll subtract the Jenga piece out once we have it. So, foiling this out, you know, first out and the last, I'll do the first two together, and then I'll do the last one next. So, this is 2x squared plus, let's 1x plus 10x, so that's 11x's, and then 5 in the back. And then I'm going to foil that to the x plus 2. So that's, uh, that's 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 11x squared plus 22x plus 5x plus 10. Um, that should be foiling everything out correctly. And combining it all down, we get to a final answer of... Uh, for this part, the first part anyway, is 2x cubed plus 15x squares plus 27x's plus 10. So that's the volume of the whole picture. But I still have to actually find the Jenga piece, which is 3x squared plus 15x. And that's the part that I'm going to subtract off of this thing. Um, so how you subtract, maybe this is the easiest way to say subtraction. This is the big picture. And I'm going to subtract a 3x squared and that 15x off. I'm going to subtract the little pieces off one at a time. Maybe that's the best way you can put it. <coughs> Does everyone understand like, what I'm doing there? Like subtracting piece by piece, the two parts that were the chain piece? That way they're kind of lined up. I have a 2x cubed, I have a 12x squared, I have a 12x and a 10. Okay, questions. Again, something very similar to that test day. Find the volume of the piece that's missing, find the volume of the whole shapes, and track them. There's different ways to do it. I've seen some people attempt to um, attempt to like find the volume of this piece, find the volume of this piece, like the Kleenex box in the middle, and then the volume of this piece, this guy's here over here, and add the three parts together. That is possible. It's way harder, but we're not going to do that. Um, here, it's, I would say it's almost impossible to do that the way that this picture is drawn, but I have, I have seen people attempt that. All right, let's move on. We're on the second page now. Okay, number what are we on, 19? Yes. Let me put the camera here. Okay, we need a fact. Um, 19, 20, and 21, that would be just like that on the test. I picked three random factor problems. It could be anything from common factors, difference of squares, cube rule. Um, cube rule, grouping, trinomials, whatever you want. I could pick any of these. So obviously we have the top one's a cube rule, the middle one's a grouping, the bottom one's a trinomial of some type, but it looks like it's probably common factor first. Okay, so is there any in particular you want me to go through? <coughs> I'll, I'll start with that. Is there one that we want to see first? Because I might not go through all of these if you don't want to do them. 19. 19? Okay, so it's a cube rule. So a cube rule, if you don't know, you have a small parenthesis, big parenthesis, 
in the small parentheses, you take the cube root of this. So what's the cube root of 8? 2. And then how you figure out the variables, just take this 3 and divide by 3. That's the cube root. So 3 divided by 3 is x to the first. The cube root of 125, that's 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. This is the most important parentheses because the sign is the same here. Okay. Um, if you have the first parentheses, you can find the back one because you're just going to use these numbers to make the back. How this works, the next sign will be the opposite and there's a plus in the back. That's how it works. It's always the opposite for the next one, plus is in the back. To get this term, you take the 2x and you square both items. It's 4x squared. The middle, you multiply these two things together and you're ignoring the sign in the middle. So 5 times 2x is 10x. And in the back, you take this item and square it, whatever it is. Well, that's 25. That's your answer. It should, this part back here should not be factorable. It should not be a difference of squares. You should not be able to do that with that problem back here. And that's just a binomial. That's a cube rule. Okay, any questions with, uh, with you know, grouping or the problem at the bottom where you factor it almost completely because it's a trinomial, but it has common factors first? We have uh, 21. 21? Okay. Let's scroll down. Anyone still need 19? Okay, I'm going to get rid of 19 here. So let's scroll down. Let's look at 21. Let's do this one. We have to factor this one completely. It's a trinomial, but it has common factors first. <coughs> All three of these, they definitely have an x, and a x squared and a 6 all in common. So I'm going to pull that out first. So 6x squared. Now what's left, if I divide the 6x squared out of each of these, an x squared, a negative 3x, and a 2. So I divided the 6x squared out of all of those. That's what was left. Again, that had to be a trinomial, because there was a trinomial to begin with, a lot of common factors. Um, and then this part can actually factor up. The 6x squared just hangs out, but it's a minus minus, x, x, 2 and 1. So that's factoring it completely. I don't think I can go any further with that. Again, you'll have to finish 20 in your round. That, that one should be easy. Okay, questions, comments? Okay, 22. 22, 23. It's some type of polynomial or rational expression. You're going to either have to multiply, or divide, add, or subtract them together. The trick is on multiplying and dividing, factor everything apart, um, flip it over, because um, the division, and then in the very end, you can simplify things out, but you also have to tell me the domain on both questions. Don't forget that number 22 and 23. That's the number one thing people messed up from last year. They always forgot to give me the domain. And domain is everything is as it adds up. Like, so if I factor this top part that I can take out a two, so that's two x squared plus five. The bottom is an x minus three. Over here, before I flip, uh, I can take out a uh, three out of the top, so that's two x uh, squared plus five. Out of the bottom is the difference of squares x plus 3, x minus 3. Well, it looks like so far the domain, I can't use positive or negative 3. So far. I mean, it's going to change. but So it's all real. So here's all real numbers except 3, positive 3, or negative 3 so far. That might change here in a minute. Okay, so far so good. Let's do the division rule where we have to flip. So I'm going to flip this fraction over. Um, so flipping this fraction over with the division, so I have the 2, 2x two squared plus 5, the x minus 3, and now we have the multiplication, and the second fraction flips, x plus 3, x minus 3, and 3, the 2x squared plus 5. Okay, so we have a new part on the bottom now. So we have a new part on the bottom. Is there any number that can make this denominator 0? Um, the reason why there's not, um, even if you plug a zero in here, the minimum number of this could be is five. If you plug a negative, that you square it first makes it positive, and you add it to five, it's going to be just bigger. So there's no way that this could ever turn out to be zero. So really, those are the only exceptions. Okay, and again, how you know that, you could set this thing equal to zero and then solve, and you'll figure out that there, it's not possible. Okay, it'll get negative square root, and that's not possible. It's not real. Okay. All right, 
right, but anyways, things that cancel, these cancel, uh, the x minus 3's cancel, so your final answer is a 2, x plus 3 over 3. Okay, so that's how you do that. And then the exceptions are up the top. Okay, and again, why this one didn't have a didn't have a, an exception? Because when you set this equal to zero, like I was saying, and you move the five across and you divide by two, you're going to get a negative number, and you're going to have to take the square root of it, which is not possible. That's the imaginary numbers. It's not possible to have a root for that. So there's no there's no exception on the bottom for that. <coughs> okay, questions on twenty. What is that? Twenty two. Yep, we're going to do 23. Okay, we get to 22 though? Everyone understand why I had certain exceptions? The big thing I'm looking for, did you simplify it all the way out? That was a big thing that caught people on the homework. Like, did you simplify the problem? Did you cancel things out? Did you give me the final domain? Or it didn't go too bad on that one. I'll, and so for the juniors, I will hand back some of your homework that you missed out on Tuesday. And you can make corrections. All late work corrections are due back tomorrow. You can make that if you have any. Okay, so on this one, the first step that I would do, um, I'm going to leave this top alone just for right now. Um, I'll get to it here in a minute. I'm going to factor the bottom just to see what the um, what the actual exceptions are before I start, because I know they're, they might change the problem um, who we are adding. So this factors out to be x. It's plus minus. It's gonna be what? Two and one. Yeah, that doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, that doesn't even work. So. I think it's just to be plus two. So, so that won't even factor. So. I think it's actually supposed to. All right. Hey, let's make it a plus. Let's make it a plus. Plus two, plus one. Yeah, let's do it. That makes it work. I don't. It might have. It might have been actually negative in the book. So. I'll, we'll make it a plus, just to make it nice and pretty for this one. Okay, so you can change it if you want. All right, so we're going to do that. Uh, let's make this problem easier to look at. All right, so at this point, um, it looks like my exceptions, if this is my new problem, uh, my exceptions on this problem are, so it's all real numbers, so this is the real number symbol, except is that two, negative 2 and negative 1. Okay, so those are my exceptions. Okay, let's get a common denominator here before I start adding and subtracting across. So the common denominator <coughs> is probably um, this. That's probably the common denominator because that's what I see for the rest of them. So every every fraction will have to have an x plus 2, x plus 1. And if you do that to the bottom of each, the tops have to change accordingly. So whatever you add to the bottom, you have to make sure you add that same thing to the top. Okay, does that make sense? So when we go straight across, the bottom should all be the same, x plus 2, x plus 1. So that's the denominator, right? That's common denominators. The numerator, though, um, I have this. We're going to subtract the next part, whatever this is, and then add the last part. This part right here, I'm worried about. You have to distribute the negative sign. That part, some people get wrong, they like how for 2. Uh, the front, I didn't really do anything with that, the 4x squared plus x minus 6. All right, now the middle terms, this is negative 3x squared. If I go 3x times x is x 3x squared, and my negative sign goes with it, and then negative 6x. Negative 3x squared minus 6x. That's the middle terms if I distribute the negative 3x to both. And then the 5 in the back, that's 5x plus 5. Okay, and what's the last?